Hi, hello, and welcome back to another video of Circuit Digest. In this webinar series, we'll be discussing about a pretty interesting company called Cyborg. So Cyborg is a company which provides IoT solutions. They provide innovative end-to-end -end IoT solutions by bridging the gap between hardware and software systems. So they work on various sectors, including home security, smart farming, logistics, healthcare, and a lot more. So to know more about the company and its plans for the future, we have its co-founder, Ms. Vidushi Gupta. So let's hear from her. Hi, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great. Hi, Smith. Hi, hi, hi. So how are you holding up with all this pandemic situation? So uh, it's now much better. We have started operating from the office earlier. Uh, till last month, we were operating from home. And yes, it was quite tough to manage when everyone was working from home. Good, good. So, uh, Vidushi, what inspired you to start Cyborg? Like, how did you put things together for your startup and how did you take it off the ground? Okay, so uh, our co-founder, Vishad, and I were working in our core domains in different companies. Vishad is a computer science engineer and had a huge exposure in software development. I'm an electronics engineer and have worked in power electronics company. What was common in both of us were you was used to make ourselves aware of technology trends existing globally. And IoT was a buzzword if we talk about five years ago. Everyone wanted to know what was IoT. So we were driven by it. We started building projects with the help of websites, uh, one of being circuit digest, obviously. So from home automation to sensor-based systems, we built few projects. We found out uh, while researching, we found out that the companies which are posting as IoT companies are totally into hardware domain or totally into application development. Those companies who was, who was just making Appli uh, mobile or cloud application for an IoT hardware was also calling itself as an IoT company. So we took this opportunity and started making solutions under one roof uh, to provide a one-stop solution to our clients. So I would say innovation, experimentation, and opportunity are the key ingredients which help us, which helped us to took this uh, company off the ground. Right. So can you tell us more about the type of services that you provide at Cyborg? Like what kind of services and solutions does your company offer? Uh, IoT is not a product, but technology. Rather, combination of existing technologies, which includes designing hardware, provide, provide, uh, programming the hardware, connecting it to the APIs and backend, development of application uh, and designing of application as well, which requires UI and UX. At Cyborg, we are a team of young, energetic, and inquisitive electronic design engineers, firmware and software developers, smartly collaborating to create next to perfect products in all aspects. From hardware designing to firmware development to integration to cloud-based platforms or building a mobile application, we cover all. Uh, even with customized form factor design, uh, mm -hmm. it's like we transform clients' ideas into a product at a single place. Mm -hmm. So uh, Vidushi, let's say that you're working on an IoT project. How does a typical product development life cycle look like? Like how do you plan your project and how do you split your uh, time and resources for a particular project? Well, uh, most um, most of the development is done simultaneously, like software and hardware team start the work simultaneously. So mm -hmm. splitting of time, resource allocation is done according to the complexity of the project. Uh, as well as some other internal factors. Uh, there are no fixed steps in typical IoT product development life cycle. Uh, improvisations are being done according to what we have done already and what new we have to achieve in a particular project. Right. So a typical IoT product life cycle goes like, after gathering requirements, uh, the next step is to brainstorm with the client uh, on the functionality, considering power and size estimates, uh, where we also discuss what features can be implemented in the same hardware or in the same system. Right. After freezing the requirements, a, a strategic plan is created to take the project further in milestones. Mm -hmm. Here we also decide technologies and communication protocols to take mm -hmm. the project further. Uh, now, uh, the major step is to eradicate the toughest problem out of the way first. It's very important to start with the riskiest assumption while building an IoT prototype. So uh, this forces us to take some hard decisions early in the stage 
rather than going months into development and obviously uh, resources are also there mm -hmm. so uh, we the rickets assumption which we think that it can be or can not be achieved we do that uh, in the early stage okay. then poc is done with off the shelf commercially available development boards okay. and a poc is nowhere similar to ready to market product uh, a poc is just to visualize uh, your product the way it would work uh, in land okay. uh, now after poc on the off the shelf uh, development boards we uh, we create uh, we design a custom pcb that is uh, on which all the components which are phased are assembled and everything is uh, according to the uh, final project but the designing the shape and uh, shape and placement is not as perfect as the final product uh, uh, after making this custom pcb this can also be given to the client for validation testing uh, our 2D designing team as well as PCB designing team. They sit together, discuss the placement of the components and peripherals and user interaction components like uh, user LEDs, uh, user buttons. Uh, these placements are finalized. Refinements are done according uh, according to the feedback of both the teams. And uh, a mature product takes into account after the refinements that have to be made by user feedback and production control monitoring. Right. Because uh, in in that early phase, uh, the production control monitoring is done basically, and that is given to the client for validation testing. So we usually get to user feedback by then. Right, right. So uh, Cyborg is working on. Uh lot of different domains right uh, as we discussed earlier you people are working on home automation to smart agriculture to health care logistics etc so what according to you seems to adapt the iot technology very fast uh, one being smart agriculture as you might also have seen many emerging startups in the sector in india as well as worldwide and secondly security devices Security right. and tracking devices again have implementations in various sectors, from home security to security of workplace in a remote location, to children's safety, to women's safety, uh, livestock monitoring, pet monitoring, geofencing, pet and livestock, avoiding carjacking, fleet management. There are already many implementations we have worked on. There are many which we see that we will be getting requirements soon. Right. So what I believe is. Uh, with time, IoT security devices will be evolving the most with different use cases, as there is no end. Right. So, Vidushri, as an engineer, uh, let's say when you're starting to work on an IoT project, like what is your go-to hardware and software choices? I know it clearly depends on the client requirements, but as an engineer, you would have some favorites like a go-to hardware and software platform, right? Like what would be your uh, go-to hardware and softwares? Uh, undoubtedly, developing IoT solutions is much more accessible with the growing availability of commercially available development boards and platforms uh, from Google, uh, Amazon, etc. Uh, we have built a good expertise in TI uh, SOCs, NRF SOCs, Microchip and Quetel. So obviously we prefer these SOCs most because we have already built uh, custom modules and which help us to expedite timelines uh, for the POC and the product and helps us to do rapid prototyping. And we have designed nodes and gateways for various low power wide area network protocols such as sub one gigas and uh, Laravel. And mm -hmm. these, uh, uh, these can be customized according to the cloud services and analytical tools as per the application uh, requirement. Uh, one of our approach is also we make our design very modular so that we could substitute new peripherals with uh, different specification with evolving requirements of the client uh, right. so that cost saving can be done like building a new pcb again and again requires a lot of uh, time mostly time and then money so we try to expedite that uh, very much uh, and for software if we talk about cloud and mobile application we use latest stack stack which are flexible and scalable mm -hmm. uh, other technologies can be merged cross cross platform apps can be created. Currently, Munch Stack and Golang are the most developer supported uh, technical stacks, and is big by large number of groups globally. So large number of developers basically. 
and for communication between IoT devices and cloud uh, or backend, we prefer MQTT as MQTT is full reflex, first of all, uh, uh, that is because uh, most of the IoT devices are built on MQTT. And, uh, and it is uh, lightweight, obviously, the data type, uh, very lightweight protocol, real time, uh, and has many other advantages over HTTP, COPE, etc. However, all these choices are again uh, dependent on the type of application we are building and implementation of the sector. Right. So Vidushi, you just mentioned a uh, LoRaWAN and MQTT as a protocol to communicate between your device and the cloud. So uh, when we speak about all these wireless protocols, we have a lot of wireless protocols being used in IoT, starting from BLE to LoRa, Sigfox, and BIoT. So how do you see all these wireless protocols? Like, uh, what would be how would, how do you select between these wireless protocols for a project? Selecting a protocol totally depends on the use case. First of all, geographical conditions. Secondly, mm -hmm. coverage required, target BOM cost, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, there are communication protocols like sub one gigahertz, Sigfox, LoRaWAN, Zigbee, BLE Mesh, which uh, which are used where large number of devices have to communicate. Uh, uh, these particular devices need not to be uh, connected to the internet directly, but they can send data to a central gateway, and this gateway. Uh, which, uh, which is connected to the internet and here uh, the gateway is connected with the technologies like LTE, CAD M1, NB-IoT, GSM, LTE, 4G, etc. Because uh, all these devices are sending data to the gateway uh, through, some, uh, ben, like, through some particular frequency and these gateways uh, send the data in return to the cloud and from cloud we pass the data on our applications uh, to visualize. So, uh, Choosing a particular protocol totally depends uh, on various factors, uh, as I mentioned, and they, and they differ in other uh, factors as well as frequency, latency, data packets, etc. So totally different according to the applications we select uh, the protocol. Right. So based on your experience, if you have to mention one protocol that is most commonly used, which wireless protocol would you mention? Okay, so uh, what I normally hear from the people, they want their product to be built on LoRaWAN if it if many number of devices are to be connected. Yeah. And but uh, personally, like uh, we have worked a lot on seven gigahertz. So uh, I love that protocol because uh, as it uh, it is under seven gigahertz, so power consumption is less and range is more. So, but, but people are not aware of 7 gigahertz as much as LoRaWAN. Everyone know what is LoRaWAN, but not 7 gigahertz. Yeah, even so, I don't, uh, I, I'm completely new to this. What is this again? Can you uh, explain it to me? What is this protocol, sub 1 gigahertz? Basically, uh, in this protocol, the devices are connected over a particular frequency. Like mm -hmm. it could be uh, 400 around frequency, 400 megahertz or 900 something or 800 something okay. according to the geographical condition because some of the some of the frequencies can't be used in uh, some countries because of the military limitations and right. other factors mm -hmm. so uh, but lower the frequency higher the range lower the frequency uh, higher the penetration among the buildings so there are various advantages over other Right. So, uh, Vidushi, another thing with the IoT devices is that most of these devices would be deployed in remote locations. So, at most times, it has to be powered with a battery, right? So, uh, how do you uh, how do you develop low power IoT devices when it has to be operated on a battery? Uh, what are some of the design considerations you take to design low power IoT devices? Well, yes, just imagine having to charge batteries of thousands of devices in, in a radius of 10 kilometer or completely changing those batteries. That is uh, that requires a lot of cost and that is not even feasible. So yes, uh, power optimization of the circuits is one of the major, uh, major point we consider while building any circuit. Uh, sometimes there is a trade-off between the performance and power consumption. 
micro as microcontrollers with higher processing power consumes more energy obviously so uh, first of all we do the thorough analysis and choose the components having ultra low power consumption and which spend most of the time in lowest power mode or in sleep mode it's like they perform their specific tasks and quickly re enter into the lowest power mode so uh, we are very careful in managing sleep cycles of all the controllers and modules chosen for the design and make an architecture in a way in which a system uh, can be used to the maximum capacity with least power consumption right. writing optimized code uh, is also very important uh, so that no extra thread uh, even runs in the background a uh, combination of ultra low power components and optimization of code optimization of code is also one of the major uh, consideration we have to keep uh, gets the job done really these both uh, gets about gets the job done mostly right so today when we say uh, iot projects you know most of them are built around raspberry pi and uh, esp modules so what is your take on this like uh, someone being in the industry do you also see a lot of raspberry pi and node and cu being used in iot products for commercial designs like uh, is it okay to use raspberry pi and uh, these esp modules for iot projects uh, esp ordino raspberry pi node and cu are for hobbies and not for commercial products at all during productization usually companies opt to move towards designing their own boards mm -hmm. so uh, why people what what my view is why people uh, most entry level projects are built on uh, these development boards is mm -hmm. uh, basically these are easier to code thanks to ready made codes available around the web for every application mm -hmm. and learning ability uh, of uh, education of its full fed education down the lane maybe right. and these hobby boards are much cheaper as compared to various development boards available in the market for example if uh, if we talk about arm snapdragon processor kit and raspberry pi the price range is hugely uh, differ uh, hugely mm -hmm. so uh, building using uh, boards commercially available boards is very time consuming because they are complicated and have a lot of new features which people are not even aware of um, those who are using these development boards and also you would have to write the code from scratch reading the data sheets uh, basically you won't get the ready made co uh, code on the web so and i don't even understand why people are so often using these development boards in their design what is the point of using development boards which can be programmed by anyone by reading just a couple of articles on right. the website so we don't support using these sometimes can be used to check the feasibility in lesser time but not in product mm -hmm. in any way so how does this transformation takes place let's say some engineer obviously i think as a fresher people would be familiarized with ordino raspberry pi uh, node mc one stuff so when they enter into the industry what kind of boards uh, do they work on like uh, from this platform to what platform do they move to uh like uh, basically there are many development boards of ti all the controllers and associates which are available in the market have their development boards to mm -hmm. so that we can develop our application mm -hmm. so uh, even when uh, when we hire for mbg development 90 out of every 100 resumes have re have only experience in these boards right. and obviously this is a, a very big problem in the industry as well because the skill set which is required in the industry like in industry uh, we opt for writing custom libraries uh, for most of the peripherals and everything so this is a very huge gap which is among the hobbyists and the industrialists and this needs to be brilliant somehow right right so uh, as an iot solution providing company in india do you face any problem in you know uh, sourcing all these components fabricating pcbs getting enclosure for your products how do you manage all these procurement and supply chain Uh, yes uh, we are into prototyping so we source components from zeki mauser arrow etc because they provide original make uh, components and other sites cannot be trusted for this there are some indian websites as well for components robo and sunroom are very good if the product is in early stage there are many development modules available uh, which can be used like for peripherals which can be used in the early stage 
So, uh, and yes, fabrication of PCB when MOQ is less is very challenging. So earlier we used to face a lot of problems because people, there were uh, companies uh, like manufacturers we, who used to make fake commitments like that they will provide the PCBs in two weeks and okay. uh, they were unable to provide those even in two months. So that was one of the major problems. But now uh, with time, like with our journey, we have explored many companies which provide, which are even online and which provide the manufactured PCV within the timeline. So yes, now the market is evolving. So we don't face this problem anymore. And uh, for 3D uh, product designing, obviously with every electronic product, uh, the client require the client requires a enclosure as well. Mm -hmm. And for that, we have a company partner co partner company. And with uh, that company, we discuss the design in the early stage after the components are free so that the placement can be done according uh, to them, as I mentioned in previous answer okay. as well. Okay. So for prototyping purpose, what type of enclosures do you use? Like, do you go for uh, 3D printed enclosures or, or yes. what is uh, um, we go for 3D printed as well. If the uh, PCB is uh, in some specific size or shape, then obviously 3D printed goes best. But uh, sometimes uh, when, uh, like for even uh, in Indian market, there are many enclosures available uh, online and your PCB can can be made according to those enclosures and right. it, like the time as well as cost. So right. we prefer both according to the project. Right. So uh, next question would be about the market for IoT devices in India. So Cyborg already has clients in US, UK and Australia. So how would you compare the adaption of IoT in India? Is India ready for IoT adaption? When you compare India with other countries, how would you compare the market and adaption rate here? Uh, yes, Indian market is very dis different. It is very cost sensitive. For most qualities, second priority and cost is the first. Indian market is very influenced by Chinese manufacturers. Uh, sometimes uh, people want the uh, product to be in the same price bracket as of the Chinese competitors. So that is one of the main problems with Indian market. And they have a uh, short to go market days. People want their products to be deployed at the earliest. And that is one of the other major problem here. And third one is, um, I'm not sure whether others also hear that or not. But um, here people prefer one uh, per piece basis. Like they ask us that we develop a project, we do R&D, we do deployment of software, everything. But what they want is they are like, we are ready to pay more than BOM cost. You can keep your margin, but we will, we will be getting devices on per piece basis. I don't know why they totally neglect the development, development cost and resources. Right. And that is one, uh, one of the major problems here. I'm not, not sure about other geographical area, if we only talk about India. But mm -hmm. yes, in Delhi and CR, that is one of the major problems. Okay. Uh, and US and UK markets have already many IoT products running. So people there are very much aware than India. Mm -hmm. And those products are already generating a huge revenue. So, and even what I've noticed in other countries is that they provide their IoT devices on subscription basis. Right. Like uh, the user doesn't have to pay at once, uh, rather they have to pay in monthly right. subscription. Right. That is very common there, but not in India. <laughs> Here people want a device in $10. They can use a phone of $600, but no, right. a device right. <laughs> under $10. That is uh, a problem. Right. Although the market in India has evolved a lot if I talk about last two years, uh, as per uh, we we get requirements. So, uh, in fact, adoption of IoT has exploded uh, in India as well. Mm -hmm. We have deployed various uh, IoT use cases in the area that we never thought of before. As uh, and these projects excite us to an extent that we love to, to make such projects. And uh, people have been so creative and. Uh, very much aware now even in india so yes the market is good in india as well and it will be better in coming years good. so vidushi if you have to put a number on this uh let's say uh how much percentage of your project that you work on is from india and how much is from other countries 
Okay, so we have just 20% from India and 80% abroad. Okay, like in initial days, it was very tough uh, to get Indian projects. Actually, in initial days, number of projects are less. So uh, development costs cannot be arranged by other projects. But now, uh, basically, people in India are not uh, ready to pay go, uh, quality assured development costs. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was one of the major problems earlier. So we never uh, got an opportunity to work with an Indian client because of the cost issues mainly. But yes, we got various other uh, projects which were very good. And yes, we learned a lot from those projects and even about the markets. Okay. So uh, what are some of the projects that Cyborg is currently working on and what are your plans for the company in future? Um, we, uh, as we work on client specific projects, so, uh, basically I'll tell you the kind of solution, which we are making. We have built almost every possibility in smart agriculture, okay. uh, from satellite imaginary, uh, imagery to, uh, detection of nutrients, uh, macro and micronutrients like uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, etc. Mm -hmm. from the soil and accordingly, uh, AIML can be done, the databases can be created so that uh, the farmer uh, can get a database of what crop to be grown uh, with the, this nutrient level and such kind of uh, developments we have done and that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, we have worked on workplace automation. We have done workplace automation in our office as well. And uh, we have done, uh, we have made very much, very, uh, Security, uh, sorry, we have made many security devices and which now are at a level where AI and ML have to be integrated. So uh, those are one of the projects which are, which have very good potential. And there are some use cases which are totally different. And as we are under NDA, I cannot disclose those projects because they have totally different use cases and we have not seen uh, that implementation till now. So, but I can assure you, we are having really promising uh, projects now and have, which have very good potential in the market. That's great. So what are your plans for the company? Like, uh, what are your plans for the future? Like, how are you planning to take the company forward from here? Well, like, um, uh, as uh, being into IoT for more than four years, we have um, we have got a competency on various technologies and uh, satellite at this time after this pandemic the market is very slow uh, right now getting project is not as easy as it was 10 years ago even uh, when the first wave was here mm -hmm. the market was good but now uh, like the market has been slowed down a little bit but i hope in another 2 3 months this will get better and future plans as if like implementing a lot of projects and making ourselves a leader of IoT in India at least in other three years. This is our uh, mission right now. So uh, that is it uh, Dishay. I'm done with most of my questions here. So uh, thank you so much for answering all of them and giving us a very good clear picture on how the scenario is. So is there anything that you would like to add up to this interview? Uh, yes. Okay. So what makes our work fun is experimenting and implementing IoT. If anyone wants us to join us as a team or as a client, they would love to work with us because we are very uh, tech enthusiast uh, people. Like our whole team is very passionate about researching and working on new technologies. So yes, working with us is a lot fun. It's really good to have a great team and it, it makes workplace fun all together. So yes, Vidishi, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you again for answering all our questions. Have a nice day. Thank you.